YouTube, Trace Man M here, and today we are in the Woodshark Studios Wood Shop. Uh, woodworking is kind of one of my other passions, other than the firearms that I've been posting. Um, as you can see here, I've got a lot of the usual suspects here. I've got the joiner, you know, bandsaw back there in the back. We've got a router table, planer, table saw. But today we're going to talk about the Rodney Dangerfield of the power saws, and this is new to me, and that is. The misunderstood, undervalued radial arm saw. Now, these have gotten a reputation over the years being the most dangerous saw in the shop. And there's a few reasons for that, but it has nothing to do necessarily with the, with the saw. If the saw is in good working order and it is tuned properly, there's no reason to have uh, the stigma to these that there is. Um, but these are also not a table saw where you can just kind of plug them in and use them and and beat them, beat them up until uh you know the day the the motor quits these uh do require some periodic maintenance and some periodic squaring up of the table squaring up of the blade um, you've got a lot of different functions here and as long as everything's square and fine you're going to be good now these would be a great saw for a beginner somebody who's building a workshop uh, is on a budget. Uh, the reason I say that, yes, new ones of these are going to run you around $1,000. Remanufactured ones of the old Deltas are going to run around $1,000, but you can pick up a lot of these for $50 or less. I picked this one up for free. Uh, they just wanted it out of their basement. Uh, the gen older gentleman who was using it had passed away. Uh, I do have a base that comes with this, but it's 300 miles away at the moment, so I will, uh, I'm still working on getting this set up. Uh, going to redo the shop as soon as I get the base and, and get everything reorganized and see if I can't make a better little floor plan. But uh, these are great, great saws for the beginner. Now, I was in that camp of uh, being, being that guy who thought they were too dangerous to use. Uh, growing up, I cut my teeth woodworking on one of these saws. And the first one that I had got a hold of, and I had no instructions, Nobody that knew what they were doing or how to work that saw, um, not knowing that that saw was out of true in the blade, um, it would shoot, it would really want to come out at you when you were cross cutting, and it would shoot boards across the room if you were ripping, and it scared the bejesus out of me. Um, but, and I was in that camp that I didn't want to get one of these. Later on, I got a, a job at a, a couple lumber yards, and they had some big large DeWalt's at the, at the lumber yard and we ripped miles of wood with it. Never had an issue with it. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that they had some professional come in and sure the saw up. They tuned it up. They got everything working the way it's supposed to work. And we never had an issue. We cut miles and miles of board and never had a problem with uh, what we were working with. Um, later on my dad got a uh, got another one and I used that one and I was very very happy with it and that fear went away. But yes, they can be very dangerous if they are not set up properly. Um, if you've got a blade that's canted just a little bit and it's cutting the back side of the wood as you're, as you're cutting through it, it's going to grab, it's going to want to push, it's going to want to pull, it's going to want to take things and throw things. But if everything's trued up on these, they are wonderful saws for both ripping and cutting. Make sure you have a good blade. Use the safety features they have on it and look and see how some of those operations are supposed to be done. Okay, now I said, said that this saw, saw was great for a beginner. And especially somebody who's on a budget who's building their workshop. I mean, you need to get beyond the fear of this. Learn the saw, learn the proper operation of the saw and how you're supposed to do things with it. And it's as safe as any other saw in the shop. And once it's set up, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. Uh, not only can you cross cut with it. But you can raise the blade up and down. It's a great saw to do dados with because the blade rides above the work. You can actually see what you're doing with your dados. Um, there are dado blades out there. Um, Home Depot's got one that's like $99 for the dado set. But you can just use this blade itself and just you know, slowly work your way across the dado. Um, 
great saw to do that with. You can see it get very, very accurate results out of it. But, let's see. Well, can you cross cut? Set this up. And run 45s with it. Want to do a compound mire with it. This whole arm slides over. And 45. Locks in, but now you can do compound miters with it, or you can do straighten this blade back out. Back to 90 degrees. You can do cross cut 45s with this saw. Uh, you want to rip with this saw. Uh, there's a proper way to rip with this saw. Uh, you spin the blade over. Go back down with this so it's not so high up off the table. get whatever work piece you're using to rip with. This is the one thing you need to do when you are ripping with these saws. There's a reason that this blade guard pivots and it needs to come down under your work piece. What's happening is this is going to rotate this way so it's going to be lifting up on that board a little bit. So this keeps that board down right where it needs to be. Drop your, your and a kick ball on it on the back end here. So in case it does kick, it catches it. You're set up to do your rips with it. The important thing when you're doing ripping and you do with this with the table saw all the time too is to measure make sure you're the same here as your measurement here so that you know everything is square and, and everything's working properly going to cut properly and you're not going to get any binding of the blade but I do have some plans on this saw working out some uh, some different projects that I'm going to probably uh, put online here as I get some time to, to do it. It's been really cold so it's been nice to get down into the shop. Uh, but since I got this I've been setting this up. Uh, another nice versatile part of, of these saws is there are all kinds of attachments for it. And this, pull the blade off, you've got a, a saber saw attachment that goes to it. Uh, again, if you're a beginner or somebody just starting out, you can take this blade off and you can put a grinding stone on there and grind with it. You can put a wire wheel on there and use it as a wire wheel. You can put a uh, buffing wheel on there and use it as a buffing wheel. I've got a dedicated grinder, but I use that about once a year. If I had this to begin with, I may not have a grinder. I may have just bought the grinding wheel and that one time a year I need to use it, pull this blade off and, and use this as the grinder when I need it. But it's nice because then you can set fences up on it. And if you're doing um, like lawnmower blades and stuff like that, it would probably make it a little bit easier or make it a little bit more quality.
that's the radio alarm saw. This is just kind of an overview of it. Um, I do plan on getting the base and getting everything set up and then start doing some projects with these. But if you find these and you find one really cheap, don't be afraid if you're, if you're thinking about maybe getting one. Learn the tool. Learn how it works. Learn how it operates. Learn the, pro the proper way to do things. And it's just as safe as any other saw out there. But this is Dreisman and I'm signing out. <laughs>